The Chicago Bears just wrapped up day four of training camp and the offense is cooking. Everybody out of Bears camp has been raving about all of the things that Caleb Williams can do inside the pocket, getting the ball released quick. It's just night and day from what the Bears are used to at the quarterback position. Even some of the most pessimistic Bears reporters who have never had anything great to say during camp are saying that Caleb Williams is showing things that you really, really, really love to see out of a rookie quarterback. There's clips on the Bears that show Caleb Williams throwing the ball to DJ Moore, and you see that the pocket starts to collapse on the outside, and instead of panicking or trying to run or getting flustered, Caleb simply steps up into the pocket and does his signature jump pass to connect with DJ. Roma Dunze has been back at practice for a few days, and he's finally ramped up, and he has been connecting with Caleb as well more often. He had a great connection over the middle today. Yesterday, he also had a connection. It seems like Caleb and Rome's are following into camp, and I love to hear updates about those too. Wide receiver Keenan Allen did not practice today. The Bears gave him what they call a vet day. They also gave that to Mercedes Lewis. So Keenan's not going to practice every single day. In the past, he has had health issues, so the Bears want to keep him as healthy as possible. And a long-term veteran like him doesn't really need these specific reps as much as the young guys do. So in Keenan Allen's absence, Tyler Scott has stepped up massively. Two times out of the four days of training camp, Tyler Scott has caught a deep ball from Caleb Williams, and that is something I absolutely love to hear. Although the Bears' big three wide receivers are clearly solidified with DJ Keenan and Rome, Tyler Scott has the blazing speed that neither of the three have, so maybe Tyler Scott might get schemed a lot this year for deep routes and get, you know, very needed development this season, as last year he barely had 30 catches on the entire season so it's definitely great to hear that Tyler Scott is getting a lot better at tracking the ball and catching it today he had to lean forward and he caught the ball falling to the ground to secure it which that's something that in the past he struggled with especially last year tracking the ball and catching the ball while uh, you know, he was wide open. <laughs> he doesn't have an issue getting open. He just had the issue bringing the ball in. So as long as he can secure the ball, this Bears wide receiver room goes four deep, which is just incredible compared to the previous Bears rosters over the years. And trying to foresee into the future, Keenan Allen is in his 30s. You know, he's not going to be here forever. He's on a contract year. Maybe Poles does re-sign Keenan Allen, but it's very good to know that Tyler Scott is developing because if he can be a, a pretty legit wide receiver three, you know, you might want to take advantage of that rookie contract next year or the year after. So nonetheless, great things out of the offense. Caleb is just getting the ball out so quick, which one of the reporters timed his time to throw and said that he's averaging about three seconds per throw. Some of them were inflated by long drawn out plays, but reporters are just raving about how Caleb is making quick and decisive throws, which I mean, uh, just covering the Bears last year, that is something that we absolutely lacked. And a huge credit to offensive coordinator Shane Waldron, who is clearly night and day better than Luke Getze, who the Bears fired, who's somehow got the OC job for the Oakland Raiders, but that's neither here nor there. On the defensive side of the ball, Tyreek Stevenson had a moment where he clamped up Roma Dunze and knocked the ball out. Jalen Johnson had a time where he, he knocked the ball out in the end zone. So both the offense and defense are going back and forth at it again. Four days into camp, neither side is dominating. We've been super used to last year when the offense had certain days where they completely picked apart the defense because we didn't have a pass rush. And we also had way more days where the defense completely dominated the offense. We had camp practices where Fields just wasn't connecting on deep balls. And, you know, just in our optimistic Bears mind, we tried to hope that that wasn't a big deal. It was just camp. But eventually into the season, it did translate as the Bears failed to push the ball downfield very often, especially early in the season. So it's good to hear that Caleb Williams is able to connect with his guys deep down the field. Also, quick check downs out of the backfield, screen, uh, bubble screens, you name it. The offense is definitely getting in gear and the pads come on at the end of the week. 
and that's when the real camp starts because everyone will be going full throttle and we'll get a better glimpse of what this team is looking like nine days away from the hall of fame game against the texans more on the defensive side Jack Sanborn, strong side linebacker, had himself a day at camp in coverage, nearly intercepting two of Caleb Williams' passes. He wasn't able to come down with it, but the fact that he, Sanborn is able to get out in those passing lanes and deflect passes is great because he was known as a downhill linebacker who was quote-unquote slow. I love to hear that he's making plays early in camp, along with linebacker Tremaine Edmonds. He also made some few a few plays today with his... 6-4 long arm frame so the backers are balling the defensive backs are battling with the wide receivers and as far as the trenches you know we don't have too much updates on the offensive line or defensive line until the pads come on because in the trenches pads make all the difference in the world so you know we'll have more updates later in the week as how the offensive line and defensive line are looking but as far as the one update i do have on the offensive line is the center position which has been rotating in and out between bates and coleman the Bates had the first go in day one, Coleman day two, Bates day three, and today was Coleman again. So they have been consistently rotating back and forth. It is a full-on competition. I personally think that Ryan Bates has the edge. It's his spot to lose. According to reporters, he seems to be the one who's getting the most love. Tevin Jenkins said that Ryan Bates has been a vocal leader. He's been a locker room leader. He knows how to operate the offense. He knows how to call out protection. So I think Ryan Bates is going to be the starting center, but like I said, it is a competition. When the pads come on, that's going to be amplified a lot more, so we will see how that progresses. As far as injury goes, it seems like everyone is relatively healthy. Most of the guys who didn't practice today were vet day vet days like i said keenan and mercedes tj edwards did not practice he's still getting ramped up that's all good he's a long-term veteran so you know you get more opportunities to uh, see some of the young guys play noah soul really need to get noah back into camp because he's one of the young guys who would have filled in for the plays that tj edwards you know is missing but he didn't practice. He was available. He's still ramping back up, I believe, from something that he tweaked from training. So overall, the recap of the past four days is that the Bears team seems like it's finally a well-rounded team. The offense is looking like a competent NFL offense, something that Bears fans are not used to seeing over the years. It's been almost a decade since we had a consistent good offense. The defense is something that I love to hear as well. The fact that, you know, this secondary, the chemistry is just so amazing. Last year, they were second in the league for interceptions. They're poised to make another jump this year, having Montez sweat all year long. And the only thing potentially holding us back is finding that second good defensive end on the opposite side of Montez. Knock on wood, you never want this to happen, but if Montez were to go down, it's kind of like the defense is back to square one before we got him in the first place. So, you know, keep an eye on Ryan Poles to see if he brings somebody else in. That's it for this update. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, drop a comment, drop, uh, say FGB in the comments, whatever you want, and I'll catch y'all on the next video.